a werewolf at the funeral. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all this morning. What a glorious day outside. And uh, we had a fantastic day yesterday and a work day. How many of you woke up this morning and couldn't walk? <laughs> I think later when we have prayer this morning, we need to have a special prayer for aching backs. But oh, man, those of you who were here and helped us uh, pulling weeds and things, uh, I had somebody tell me they cannot believe how deep the weeds go here. I said, because there's a lot of depth in this church, you know? <laughs> anyway, it's great to see you all this morning. We want to begin our worship time this morning, and uh, I want to read to you from the scriptures, from the Psalms. And, you know, as we come in here, we love seeing each other, and uh, we just, uh, I just love the noise. But now, for the next few moments, let's gear down and just prepare our hearts to hear the voice of the Lord this morning. The psalmist wrote, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Shout with joy to God, all of the earth. Sing the glory of his name and make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. Let's stand together and let's pray. Father, we praise you today. We come into this place and you are the mighty God. You are the one who created all, and yet you are the one who reached down into the depths of our hearts to touch us with the hand of God. You sent forth your only begotten Son so that we would know what God is like and that 
he would come and rescue us from our own sinfulness, pay the price that we could never hope to pay, that we might become the children of God. And today, as your children, as your sons and your daughters, we bow before you. We praise your name. We shout glory to God. And we hear the angels sing out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We realize that heaven and earth is filled with your glory. And now may our words this morning, may the meditations of our hearts, may all of our thoughts be suitable to stand before the glory of God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, sing with us this morning. We're going to sing Love Lifted Me. And I hope this morning as you're here, you're here because love has lifted you. God bless you. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within. Seeking to rise no more But the masters of the sea Heard my despairing cry From the waters lifted me Now save am I Love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help seated. So we all have the pleasure this morning of uh, participating and reading God's word together. So join me. I, I'll start with the first part and then Carol will help you all read the second part. Oh God, you are my God, and early in the morning will I seek your face, for my soul is thirsty for you. 
I desire to see your glory in the songs of praise. I will sing to you in your holy sanctuary. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee, and I will bless you while all the days of my life I will lift up my hands to your name. O oh God, you are my God, and my soul shall be satisfied with your love, and my mouth shall praise you with songs of love. I will remember you and consider your blessings in the difficult days and rejoice as I take my rest in the shadow of your wings. I love you, O oh Lord, and I will search carefully for your ways as your right hand strengthens me. I will wait upon my God, for from him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock, and I shall not be moved. Let us trust in our God at all times. Let us pour out our hearts before him, because his love is everlasting. O oh God, you are my God. In the evening will I seek your face, for in the blessings of your love my heart rejoices. I hear your glory in the songs of our praise. I will sing love songs to you in the holy sanctuary. Now may the words we just read continue in your heart throughout the day. great to see you all here this morning and if you happen to be here for the very first time welcome and uh, it's really our prayer that today as we worship you will sense the Lord's presence and experience just his arms around you and hear his voice anyway this morning there's several things I want to highlight in our program but first of all we want to just recognize these flowers this morning they are in honor of Hank and Mickey Correjas 48th wedding anniversary, which will be on Wednesday. Hank and Mickey, you're back there. Stand up. Let everybody see you back there. Happy anniversary. God bless you guys. Wonderful to see you this morning. Now, next Sunday will be Palm Sunday, but among other things, in the evening we will have a movie night and hot dogs and popcorn and... Uh, we always have a great time when we do that. The movie we're showing, we, we've changed it several times, but we're going to be showing the movie Risen. And uh, for a Hollywood movie, this one turned out pretty good. Uh, sometimes uh, Hollywood movies of biblical stories kind of get twisted around. But this, this we've, we've shown it oh, about seven or eight years ago. But uh, it's a good film and very inspiring. Hope you can come. If nothing else, have a hot dog with us. Have a great time. Anyway. Uh, women's ministry wants you to know you shouldn't worry, you should be happy, because they're going to have a don't worry, be happy event. And uh, that is on April 30th. There are going to be sign-ups out there today, and uh, I usually tell you to go out and turn right. Well, this time they're on the left. They've gotten more liberal. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not resist that. Uh, Jody doesn't get to be the only one who tells jokes. <laughs> but just turn to your left and sign up. It's great. They've got quite a wonderful program. You'll want to be part of it. Now, there's some other things I want to highlight here for you that are coming up. Um, you know, we're coming to Easter week, in another week or so. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and then Easter Sunday. 
And on Easter Sunday, we're having an 8 o'clock service for those of you who want to do it early. And we're having a 10 o'clock service for those of you who don't even get going until 9 o'clock. But we will have plenty of refreshments. Bring your neighbors, bring your friends, come to one of the services. What a wonderful time to be, Easter time, be together. And uh, I want to just mention I, what I'm doing on Palm Sunday. A message is when the stones kept silent. And then on Easter Sunday, the day the angels shouted, and then I have a post-Easter message, which is all about what the stone had to say. And then Pastor Jody will be doing Good Friday, and his message will be funeral or festival. And as we come around the Good Friday, we'll be having communion on that, sun, on that time on Friday, and uh, that service will be at 5 in the evening. So just uh, want you to make note of that. We hope you can be with us. A lot of good things. Now, there's one other thing I do want to mention here. Uh, a lot of our folks, I think there's six to eight of them, are part of the Lincoln Hills Community Chorus up here. They are putting on a very special program, and uh, we'll be up there in the ballroom on May 5th, 6th, and 7th. And Jackie is one of them. There she is. She wrote this out, so i got to read it to you. Songs to cheer you after two years of pandemic, and it sort of takes you through it. First half starts with don't get around much anymore, and then it ends in the second half with oh, happy day. <laughs> they're, they're all Disney songs, I guess, and uh, you, you, it'll make you feel good. So uh, there are some uh, cards out there. You can avail yourself of that. Like I say, there's quite a number of our folks that are part of that. Well, I'm glad you're here this morning, and I want to just uh, ask you to join me as we pray. Uh, lots of you know that Ron Berg went home to be with the Lord last week, and so please be praying for Marilyn and the family. Uh, Narita Ferguson has been in the hospital, and uh, just uh, want to pray for her freedom from pain and just some real wisdom for the doctors. Marcia Smart went to the hospital just uh, the other day, and she was diagnosed with leukemia. She is home, but I want you to be praying for her. And uh, just a number of other folks that are listed there for you to be praying uh, for the folks. Let's pray this morning for Steve and Don Liberti. They're one of our missionaries that we support that work with Eastern Europe. And this is what it, I want you to listen to what it says. We need prayers from Steve and Don's colleagues in Belarus. You know, Belarus, a former Soviet republic, is just north of the Ukraine. Their colleagues have been forced to leave their homes and in some cases their extended families to escape the political upheaval and the increasing danger there. Belarus is fully aligned with Russia, but Belarusians are putting their lives on the line to help people in the Ukraine. So we want to pray for them today and pray for the whole Ukrainian crisis and for those who are just... Uh, being devastated there. So let's look to God in prayer. Father, we come today, uh, you are the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort. You are the God who holds history in the palm of your hand. There's nothing happening that has escaped your notice. Today, as we come, we pray for the nation of Ukraine. And for those who are in Belarusia, choosing to help those in the Ukraine at great danger to their lives. Father, we pray for peace. We pray not only peace, peace militarily and politically, but we pray for the peace of God that passes all understanding, that it might begin to guard the hearts and the minds of those who just have been devastated by this invasion. We would even pray, Father, for those in high places in Russia that the peace of God that reaches into the depths of a man's heart would touch some of those responsible for this invasion. Give great wisdom to our leaders in our nation to know how to help and how to respond. Lord, you are in charge of everything. There's nothing that's escaped your notice. We, we do not begin to understand how all these pieces fit into your puzzle but we know that you have a perfect portrait of the end days so as we wait upon your hand let us be faithful 
Let us be people of prayer. Let us be people of consistency in our walk with you. And may we never cease to fail, never cease to be praying for those in high places that they would make right decisions. Today, Lord, I pray for Marilyn Bird, Narita Ferguson, Marcia Smart, and many others we've listed here. That, Lord, you would touch their bodies, touch their lives where they are needed right now. Help them to find your peace. And, Lord, where there is healing needed, we ask that you would bring healing. And where there is not to be healing, that you would bring grace and length of days. And, uh, Lord, we all here today, we're all on our way home one day so let us turn our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him despising the shame the shame of the cross nevertheless suffered for us and now has sat down at the right hand of the father and he's just waiting for us one day to come home and we look forward that day when he says well done my good and faithful servant and Lord, as we pray, we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you all.
Good morning. I've entitled the sermon today, Your First Love. I met Trisha in the youth group in a church in the South. That was Southern California. <laughs> I had been at this church for a number of years, and I remember one Sunday night we had a youth group meeting, and there were four or five pretty young women that came in and they were all good looking but there was one that I said wow wow and gentlemen when I say that and I do wow you know what I mean don't you well it wasn't too much longer that I would I got brave enough to ask Trisha out on a date and she was dumb enough to say yes <laughs> and I remember I took her to McDonald's and the budget walk-in theater I was a big spender back those days. And I really don't remember. Do you remember if I kissed you on the first night? The first date? Oh, she did this, yeah. So I know, I, you know, I couldn't remember if I actually did, but I know that I tried. So I kissed her, and I remember, I remember driving home thinking, wow. Now, I'll be honest with you. In the fourth grade, there was this cute little girl named Melody Johnson. But can I tell you, Trish is my first love. Always has been and always will be. We are in the book of Revelation. To the angel of the church at Ephesus, write, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this, I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance and that you cannot endure evil men and that you've put to test all who call themselves apostles and they are not and you have found them to be false and you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. But I have this against you. You have left your first love. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the blessings that we've seen today and the hope that we have for tomorrow. We would pray, Heavenly Father, for the next 15 or 20 minutes that you would keep the world outside, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds. Father God, draw us close to you during this worship service. And Lord, when we leave, let us be able to say... It was good to be in the house of the Lord. For we ask these things in Jesus' most precious, his most powerful name. Amen. Amen. Do you remember a number of years ago, there was a TV show called The Newlywed Game? And what the idea was is they'd get, get couples who were married less than a year. And they'd ask them questions about each other. And if you got the right answer, the same as your husband or your wife, you got points. And then the one who had the most points at the end of the night won a fabulous prize like a, a washing machine. <laughs> I remember they had this one special show one time, and it wasn't couples who had been married less than a year. It was couples who had been married for more than 50 years years and they ask one question what is the best song that that represents your marriage to your husband and one woman was asked that question she looked to her husband she raised her eyebrows and she said the best song that describes my marriage to my husband the thrill is gone <laughs> Do 
Now, it was a great answer, and the, the audience thought it was the funniest answer they had ever heard. Now, of course, of course she still loved her husband, but the fact of the matter was the wow. The thrill was gone. The passion, that excitement, that thrill that had brought them together in the first place was gone. And Jesus says to the church, I have this against you. You have left your first love. The scriptures that we're reading today are the words of Jesus as he speaks about the wonderful things that the ancient church in Ephesus had done and the things that they were doing. But in verse 4, he tells them, you have left your first love. You see, it was Jesus. It was Jesus who was their first love. And it seems to me that when we read the scripture addressed to another church in the Bible, we could very well see the passage as being sent to us here at Lincoln Community Church. And Jesus may just be speaking to us, and he is saying this, that I know your love for me. I know your good works, but maybe, just maybe, the thrill is gone. If the thrill is gone, it's too bad for Jesus. And it's too bad for us. Let's go back to Revelation 1. To the angel of the church at Ephesus, write, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this. This is Jesus dictating a letter to the apostle John. He's speaking to himself about himself in the third person. And when he says, I'm walking in between the golden lampstands, theologians who know about this, such things suggest that the seven golden lampstands are the seven churches that are addressed in the book of Revelation. Jesus says, I hold the seven stars in my right hand. And again, the theologians figure that the seven stars are the leaders of those seven churches. And while the churches were actual churches in the day of the apostle John, Today, they also represent every type of church in 2022. And so the message is true for every church. The message is true for Lincoln Community Church. And I believe that God has a special blessing for the church, for the Christian who opens the Bible and reads the Bible, expecting to learn something from the Holy Spirit. We have this phrase in the Wednesday night Bible study, and the phrase is repeated every week, the Bible meant something to somebody else before it meant something to me. And the idea is this, that 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John knew exactly what he meant to these seven churches. And 2,000 years ago, these seven churches understood what John was saying to them. But for us, we are separated by 2,000 years. We're separated by culture. We're separated by the language. You see, there's no way that the Apostle John could know what it's like to live in Lincoln, California in 2022. But my Bible says the Word is inspired by the Spirit of God. And so we read Revelation 2, 7, He who has an ear, let him hear what the... Spirit says to the church, and when we open up the Word of God, expecting God to speak to us, He does so in the Holy Spirit, or in the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to Lincoln Community Church. And while the church, while this message is directed to Ephesus, we would be foolish not to pay attention to the message of the Spirit. And this is what the Spirit says to the Lincoln Community Church. I know your deeds. I know your toil and your perseverance, that you cannot endure evil men, that you put those to the test, those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you have found them to be false, and you have perseverance, you have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. My brothers and sisters, God the Father knows the deeds of Lincoln Community Church. He knows of our hard work. He knows of our perseverance and the hard times that we've had in the last two years. 
that we cannot endure evil men, but that we have endured for the precious name of God, that we have not grown weary. God has blessed Lincoln Community Church. Somebody say amen. amen. God knows our works. He keeps an account of our deeds and our labor in the eyes of the Lord is good. What a wonderful church that he has given us. Look at all of our wonderful accomplishments. Praise the Lord. But I have this against you. You have left your first love. It seems that we've done very well in the eyes of the Lord. And while I believe he speaks about the good things in this church, God certainly sees things that we need to be reminded if we are lacking. And the Spirit of God is speaking to the Lincoln Community Church. And you know it's very easy to sit when somebody keeps praising you and telling you what good things that you've done, it's very easy to sit and accept these things. But it's not always easy to be reminded of the things that we could do better. And that word left, it means to abandon, to give up, to depart. And can you imagine hearing those words from your husband or your wife or your child? You have left your first love. Those would be powerful words. But how devastating to hear those words from the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord knows that we are human. The Lord knows that sometimes the thrill is gone even though we still love God Jesus told the church 2,000 years ago, you have left your first love, so let me ask you a question that I don't want you to answer out loud. Have we left our first love? Have we simply, casually, carelessly walked away from Jesus, our first love? The gospel of the Bible is simply this. God created you. God loves you. And he looks at the majesty of the sun and the moon and the stars. He looks at the mountains and their mighty rivers, the forests and their great trees. God takes in all of that and then he looks to you and he says, you are my best thing. And God said, I love you. But James tells us that there's this thing in this world called sin. James 4, 17. Therefore, to him who knows the right thing to do, and he doesn't do it, to him it is sin. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know what? When we stand next to a thief, a liar, or a cheater, we look pretty good, don't we? But when we stand next to God, we fall short of his grace and the Bible says all have sinned Isaiah 59 2 tells us that our sin has separated us from God God didn't walk away from us we walked away from God but here's the paradox of God's great love John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 4, 19, we love because he loved us first. My first love from the very beginning of time. God the Father was our first love. And I don't know about you. I know that we're all different, but I remember in the fifth grade making that salvation prayer. I can remember just loving the Lord, and I know that I am the excitable type, but we're all just a bit different. Trisha is not the excitable type, and I am. And when she called Jesus Lord, she accepted the love that God had for her, and she returned that love but she was not doing a backflip of joy. She wasn't doing cartwheels in the aisle. She just loved the Lord and the Lord loved her back. And for Tricia, that love has become an ongoing, increasing awareness of his love. 
And when I first loved God, it was brand new. It was exciting. I was happy in the new life that I had found. And I realized that I loved him because he first loved me. I first love. And looking back at that passion that I had more than 50 years ago, I ask myself, have I left my first love? Has the thrill gone away? Now, do I love God? Yes, of course. There's no doubt. But do I love him like I was a teenager? Not always. But I think maybe that's not a bad thing at all. Regarding Trisha and my relationship when we were first in love, do you realize I knew her phone number by heart because I didn't have a cell phone that had a quick speed dial? So I knew her phone number by heart. And then I got to know her mom and her dad and her brothers because in those days, you had to actually talk to somebody to leave a message. I knew her phone number at work. I got to know her co-workers when she was away from her desk. I had a key to her car. I knew what time she got up. I knew what time she went to bed. I knew where she went to lunch. Today, you would call me a stalker. <laughs> but back then, I was just in love. And I realize that my love for Trisha has matured over the years. And man, it's the same for my love for Jesus Christ. You see, there's a deeper love that we experience as humans as our love progresses 20 and 30 and 40 years and on. And sometimes that love is richer. It's fuller. It's more satisfying than that first love that we had in the first year of marriage. It's not always as exciting. It's not always as passionate. It's not always as thrilling. And I think maybe the same thing is true for the Lord. You see, I realize that my love for the Lord has matured over the years. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And you know, like all of us, every once in a while, I forget that. And so the Lord Jesus tells Christians, he tells the Lincoln Community Church, he tells every seat in every row in this sanctuary. And what he's saying is this, you have done great things. Nevertheless, your passion is not what it was before. And sometimes I think our desire for God got misdirected. Are we busy doing for the Lord rather than just loving the Lord? And I have to ask, have we substituted the greatness of loving God for the goodness of serving God? Has our passion turned into a job. Today we're in Revelation, the chap chapter 2, the verses 1 through 7. And let me suggest something to you. When you go home today, find your Bible, dust it off, find the last book, find the second chapter, look at the first seven verses and read it for yourselves. And when you read it for yourselves, you're going to see that Jesus is speaking to you. And he wants you to remember your love for God, where you've come from. Remember the excitement that you had for God's name. Remember our salvation. You see, we are told to remember those things that we have walked away from. And then, and then Jesus tells us to come back. We are told to remember the things that we did at first. Return to our first love with a passion that we once embraced and carry on with the thrill of loving God. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Remember and return. 
And those are commandments for each of us. And I think there's no, uh, if there is no love, and I mean a passionate love for God, then we have to question, has the thrill of loving God gone away? And while the message is clear for the Lincoln Community Church, it's a message for every believer, whether you worship at this church or another church. Let us get back to the passion, that thrill of loving God before anything else like we used to. And sometimes there's a great mystery in life for the mature Christian because we forget we are having a love affair with God the Father, the creator of all heaven and earth. It's a love affair, passionate and thrilling. God is not interested in your attendance, in your duty, in your sacrifice, and in your tithe as much as he is interested in your love for Jesus Christ. We can take the good things that God has given us and walk away. Or we can continue in that excitement, that passion that we had so long ago. And no matter how long we've been a Christian, no matter how much our love has matured, God is still worthy of a wow. Amen? So what's the preacher saying today? I say that every time that I, that I preach. So what's the preacher saying today? There's a couple of reasons I do that. First of all, it gets Jim at the organ. <laughs> he knows we're about to end, so he wants to get there as fast as he can. 20 years ago, I had a friend that said, Jody, that was a great sermon you preached. It was wonderfully put together. The scriptures fit perfectly. He said, but so what? I said, what do you mean? He said, so what do you want me to do? Oh. See, we can give out those great scriptures. We can reference our experience and so I came up with, so what's the preacher saying today? This is so what? I'm reminding us that as a Christian, our first love is Jesus Christ. I want us to remember that sometimes, even though we still love God, the thrill is God. The thrill is gone. We have been so busy in these last two years. Brother Jim, pastor, the elders, we have been so busy. You might not know it, and they play it off like it's no big thing. And last week at Danuba, the Spirit of God spoke to me. There was a little band, and they shared this scripture. David said, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. These last two years, we've been very busy. We've seen some wonderful things. We've accomplished some wonderful, wonderful things. But last week, the Holy Spirit reminded me that I've been so busy that I have not come into the sanctuary of God just just to behold how beautiful he is. And so for the last two weeks, I have not neglected to look for his beauty. And then I understand that when I come into his sanctuary and look for his beauty, that passion, that uh, fresh, there's that fresh feeling that I had from the very beginning. And maybe if it's true for me, I'm not the only one. Have we been so busy in these last days doing for the Lord that we have forgot to love the Lord? Love him with a passion, a fire, the thrill like we once did. I am reminding all of us that we are told to remember and to return that feeling of love because God is still worthy of a wow. And today, we have an opportunity to come around the Lord's table 
and remember his love. God be praised. Let's come to the table. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is relating the events of the night on Jesus' Last Supper. And the Apostle Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus gave them the bread and then he said, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus gave his disciples the fruit of the vine and he said, remember me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The bread, the fruit of the vine are symbols of the body that Jesus gave on the cross and the blood that he shed for us because he loved us. And so we will come to the Lord's table remembering the love that God has for us. Pastor Mike, could you ask God's blessing on the cup and the bread, please? Lord, as we gather at this table, we gather to remember. Forgive us when there are those times when we allow other things to crowd out our attention. But as we sit here today, let our minds be upon the cross. Yes. As we take the bread, let us remember that your body was given for us. We who sin had you who had no sin take our place upon the cross. And as we hold the cup, let us remind ourselves that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, but the blood of bulls and goats and lambs will not suffice. Only the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world can die for our sins, and the cup reminds us of that infinite gift that was given for us. And we thank you now in your holy, wonderful, marvelous name, we partake of this communion meal. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
1 Corinthians 13, 2. If I do not have love, I'm nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. And 1 Corinthians 13, 13. There is faith, there is hope, there is love. But the greatest of all is love. The night in which Jesus was portrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, then he broke it, and he said, take, eat. And on the night of the Last Supper, he sat around the table of love, and he passed the cup his disciples and he said drink ye all of it we're going to pass out these what are they what baskets that's what they are yeah and so our volunteers are going to pass the baskets and then you can place those uh, your cups into the baskets. We're also told that after the Last Supper that they sang a hymn. And I can't think of a better hymn as our singers come. Thank you. Thank you. Father in heaven, we come before you at this time when we close our 
worship service. We have a grateful heart, Lord, because you are with us. You guide us. You are our creator. Everything comes from you, Lord, and we thank you. Father, we also, we thank you because you love us so much that you adopted us into your family and now we are children of God. And Father, we thank you for our church and we thank you for our pastors and our pastors that teach us your word, Lord, and they do it correctly in a way that we can understand it and we thank you, Pastor Jody, for his message today, that we can take it into our heart, take it into our lives, to live it and to share it. And Lord, at this time, the thing that we are most grateful for is your son, Jesus Christ, who chose to come to the earth to show us the way and to pay the price for our salvation. And Father, this time we also ask you to touch us and be with us as we prepare for his celebration of his resurrection. Touch us all so that we will be prepared to say, thank you, Lord, he has risen. Father, we ask you to continue to be with us, to heal us, keep us well until we meet again. These things we ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen.